Dominik hier, moin. Heute mal ein Video aus Taipei, denn ich habe es endlich mal geschafft, bei Synology einen Termin zu bekommen, nachdem sie ins neue Headquarter umgezogen sind. Da hinten gehe ich jetzt rein, darf die Kamera aber nicht mitnehmen, denn dort wird die neue Hardware entwickelt und ja, leider ohne Kamera. The so people if they call for technical help. Ah. So they work. So, da bin ich zu Hause. It's a quality check in general. So, we've got, we've got like a lot of our machines here. It's a bit noisy, so I'm not sure if you can do it. Yeah. Wow. We do a lot of testing. Yeah. This is so many different stations, rack stations. Yeah. Wow. So, ich bin hier im Headquarter und habe ein paar Fragen an Synology. Es werden auch unangenehme Fragen gleich werden. Und dafür ist hier einmal Sabrina und Hu. Thank you for being with me here in the interview. And my first question is about DSM-7. It should be released this year. Can you tell me what are the interesting or main features from DSM-7? So, as you have heard, I think we expect to release DSM 7.0 towards maybe the end of this year or early next year. And in terms of what's interesting, um, a lot of the features were already revealed last year if you were uh, in our annual events, such as the new user interface, the new design. And all I can say is that um, this year what we have added to the 7.0 will be much more than what we already know. If I'm going to give you some ideas, it will probably be, we're going to offer a more powerful solution in terms of data management. And powerful, it means that uh, in terms of performance, like it will be better from system storage level to interface level. And uh, in terms of in terms of management, you will be more powerful if you want to manage a lot of smart analysis at the same time. And also, you will have tighter integration with the cloud. And these are just some hints, and that's probably what I'm allowed to say at the moment. <laughs> but uh, if you go to our annual event at Germany, I think it's in Berlin this year, yeah. around September, then you will have all the information there. Oh, that's great. Okay, thank you very much. My next question is about the CPUs in your NAS, in your uh, disk stations. Many of the customers think it's not strong enough, the CPU, and uh, many customers wish in the plus series a 10 Gbit uh, network interface. Is it planned for the future, or why are the CPUs in the plus series, for example, um, and not stronger ones? Okay. Um, I will probably need to separate this question into two. The first part is about CPU and the second part about 10 gig. And uh, in terms of CPU, maybe let me talk a little about how we select a CPU for each of the model. And one example being our very popular the DS9 18 Plus. You know that it uses an Intel Celeron J3455 CPU. And then we have another high-end Plus series, the DS1618 Plus. 
which use a uh, more powerful the Intel Atom C three five three eight CPU. So a lot of users they had asked us why don't Synology put this more powerful CPU to the nine eighteen plus things like that, and. The reason is because when we select a CPU, we take into account a lot of different aspects like performance, which is very important, and then cost, whether the CPU is seized at the right price that our users are willing to pay for, and whether it has specific features that our users are going to need when running specific applications. So in terms of the DS918+, Plus, it's because the theoretically more powerful Intel Atom CPU doesn't offer a feature called power transcoding which is required for if you want to run video station gen or Plex Media Server, which a lot of our 918 plus users are running. That's why we can't use some theoretically more powerful CPU to uh, some plus models. That's one of the reasons. However, we also realize that because we are continuing to put more applications, especially CPU intensive applications like the virtual machine manager, <laughs> to the NAS. So we have also received a lot of users asking for a maybe smaller record or NAS with maybe for a very powerful CPU, uh, 10 gig support or even M.2 SSD slot for the NVMe SSD cache. And that's where, why there was a model called RS1619 Access Plus came from. It's because a lot of users want to use a small but very powerful rack station for running virtual machines. And this example shows that actually we, when we design the hardware, when we select a CPU, we actually need to consider what kind of applications are going to run on the NAS and make appropriate selections. But we also know that the growing trend is that most Synology users are not using our NAS as pure storage anymore. They also use it as a media server, application server, and so on. So more powerful CPU is definitely something we're going to work on in the future. Just maybe wait uh, until our future models. And I think the current CPU is already very a uh, good choice for what users are doing right now. Um, as part of our Plus series already has PCIe support. Uh, with which you can add 10 gig network cards like the 1618 plus it has a PCIe interface and if you ask why don't we uh, make the PCIe interface available to other plus models or why, why we don't have built-in 10 gig support it's actually because um, according to our user reported data only a very small um, a percentage of the Synology users who uses the PCIe interface to add 10 gig network card. So yes, we know that a lot of pe uh, people are asking for 10 gig, but actually there are a lot of more, a lot more users out there who are not using the 10 gig compatibility. And I think it might be because like that home for home users or small businesses there infrastructure are not quite ready yet they haven't moved to that stage yet like if you want to use 10 gig doesn't only mean that your NAS need to have 10 gig it means that your switch your router or sometimes if you want really really fast uh, connection between the client and the NAS then you need your desktop computer to have 10 gig cards as well and a lot of our users have not moved to that stage so we need to decide whether we want to make 10 gig default option built into OR plus your NAS and make the cost a bit higher for all our users mm -hmm. or maybe if we want to leave it as an option for users who really really want 10 gig to uh, add a 10 gig card. Okay, maybe that's why uh, Qlib released uh, own switch uh, mm -hmm. for uh, yeah, private households um, and that there is a capability to um, have 10 gig on a long grind. Yes, we noticed about QNAV and actually if we, you just want 10 gig connection for the switch, there are a lot of offerings on the market at the moment. You also have, you also have 10 gig switch from Nikio or other very established uh, networking vendors. Um, how I, so like if you want, really want to move to the 10 gig, I think you can look uh, at these offerings, the switches, and our 10 gig compatible NASes. Yeah, but for Synology, we have no plan to make a 10 gig switch at the moment because 
uh, a switch is a switch and there's very limited features that we can add yeah. to a switch. So we don't really want just to make a hardware because we want to sell a hardware. We want to make a hardware because we want we can think of some additional features that can bring more values to the hardware. That's kind of what we how we decide whether we want to have a new product line in technology or not. Okay. How we collect these figures because in DSN there is something called the user usage statistics mm -hmm. where users can choose whether to send it to us or not. So we can uh, have a look at all the analysis in the world mm -hmm. in a quantitative manner. So like that's how we know that only a small percentage of people are using 10 gig. So mm -hmm. like, but I know that a lot of people choose not to send these statistics to us, which is why they might be ignored mm -hmm. in the data set. Ich hatte gerade mal nachgefragt, um, so was nicht im Video sein sollte. Und zwar, wie Sie denn auf den Gedanken kommen, dass 10 GB nicht erwünscht sind. Und zwar, ihr habt die Möglichkeit, einerseits ja sagen, dass die Statistiken an Synology geschickt werden. Das, was da gesammelt wird, aus diesen Daten wissen Sie, dass sehr wenige da draußen, so sagen Sie es, wie ihr gerade gehört habt, oder wie ich es gerade gehört habe, dass 10 GB gar nicht eingesetzt wird. Und es gibt die Möglichkeit, einen Wunsch zu äußern, wenn ihr also die Nachricht an Synology schickt, wenn das hunderte tun, ich habe es schon oft gesagt, dann wird das eher wahrgenommen, als wenn immer nur in irgendwelchen Foren gemotzt wird. Also hergehen, Mail schreiben über das Feedback-Formular oder Feature-Request und dann wird es auch wahrgenommen. How about the mail cluster? Last year in, I think, February, March, you released the version 2 mm -hmm. and it's uh, multi-domain capable. So it's wonderful for me because I used Mail Plus uh, after it was released and I have four domains. So if I have an assistant who is answering my emails and helps me, mm -hmm. he got as well three domain email addresses or three domains. And now I want an automatic answer and it's just for this user. So it's not possible because I need at least uh, an automatic answer for every domain. Would it be possible? I asked for this uh, one year ago mm -hmm. and asked three months ago again and nothing happened. Okay. Uh, I remember we discussed internally about that feature when you reported for quite a while. And again, that is something that we hope to make it possible in the future releases but as to why it's not happened yet uh, that's because like after we released the mail plus 2.0 last year last April I think something happened that is called GDPR and then we suddenly received a lot of requests from business using mail plus saying that they want us to help them to comply to GDPR better such as being able to search through all the email server okay. to find the email to delete the email and so on we also have Companies want to move in their email, move their email services in the public cloud back to a self-hosted email server. So we had to fulfill all of those demands first because GDPR is an important topic, mm. a lot of user requests, and then we can start working on the usability and more functionality things. Okay. So that's definitely something we hope to. So, die DSGVO war also schuld, warum dieses Feature nicht bearbeitet wurde. Ich dachte nämlich, ich hatte die Frage vorher schon gestellt und hatte tatsächlich auch die Qualität, oder nicht die Qualität, sondern ja, die Entwicklung so ein bisschen angezweifelt, wenn man einen Mail-Plus-Server rausbringt und dann die Multidomain-Fähigkeit mitmacht und dann die Antworten nicht da sind. Aber die DSGVO, oh okay, scheint mir schlüssig. Yeah, and my last question is, what about the future plans of Synology of your new NAS systems? Maybe um, everyone is expecting a 20 series and what are your plans for this year or near future? Okay, so in the near future, um, we are going to release a couple more models in July. 
but then I more focusing on the business product lines. Oh. And then for the rest of things that are coming out in Q3 or Q4, I would suggest that everyone wait until our annual event in September, so just two more months, and then you will see what we announced there. Everything we announced there will happen quite maybe quite soon in Q3, Q4 or later. At least that's what we already have plans for. And if what um, what we don't announce there, probably you need to wait a bit a bit later for that. Okay. And also, but we in the at, at the annual event we will also announce quite a lot in terms of the software. So maybe new applications. Uh, new enhancement storage level and integration with the cloud and so on. So um, I really look forward to September where I can tell everything, uh, everyone about everything. And now, right now, we'll just need to wait. Okay. Yeah, actually, we're quite excited yeah. about the event. Actually, uh, for now, I can just tell that it's uh, it's all about better uh, user experience. It just just not uh, it's not only about the user uh, better user. In, interface about the uh, floor and better performance and uh, we how we make our NAS more easier to manage and maybe integrate with our cloud actually we got so much new features or even applications to launch at the event yeah. so because it's Synology 2020 so it's a milestone kind of for us I think it would be an exciting event <laughs> okay mm -hmm. thank you very much uh, for you both, for your time and for this interview. It's our pleasure. Und ihr habt es ja gehört, also ich habe nochmal gefragt, die DS218 Plus, weil so viele gefragt hatten, äh, sie ist jetzt noch kaufbar und wahrscheinlich, ganz vorsichtig gesagt, wird im September da nichts kommen für dieses eine Modell, aber es werden, werden welche kommen, so viel darf ich sagen, aber mehr leider auch nicht. Ja, das waren meine Fragen, die auch ganz häufig angetragen wurden unter Videos. Ich schaue mir jetzt nochmal das Headquarter an. Ihr dürft dabei sein oder habt es jetzt schon gesehen. Und wir sehen uns beim nächsten Mal. Macht's gut. Ciao. Und da drin ist es dann mal nicht gekühlt. Da werden die Tests gemacht, äh, Wärmetests, also unter extremeren Bedingungen. It's just an umbrella. It's raining. <laughs> it's not all it's just umbrella. Good. Yeah, with, with it's quite exclusive. Yeah. It's quite exclusive. Is it? Yes. Wow. Oh, yes. They are very heavy. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> <laughs> oh.